grab some pen and papers because we're going to write some gothic books. Hello there, my beautiful book lovers. My name is Kimia and welcome to my book nook. So we're still in winter. It's the last leg. So it's not as bad, but it's still dark, gloomy. Sometimes it's wet, rainy, snow. And so I was really in the mood to read some gothic books. And while I was looking for a recommendation, I came across this list on Goodreads, which I will leave the link down below in the description, that a lot of people had sort of recommended and suggested their favorite gothic books and others had voted on them and while I was like looking at them there's like a whole bunch like I think there was like a hundred or something books in there but I was very intrigued by top 10 and while uh, I have read most of them there were a few that I have not read and then after I read them and I was done with the, like the top 10 I was really intrigued to sort of rate them not based on how good the book was or was not but based on were they really a good gothic book or people just recommend them because of whatever reason and some other people just voted on them so today that's what we're going to do we're going to look at the list and um i will give it like a very short description of what the book is again most of them are classics so i'm pretty sure you have read them or at least heard about them uh but i really want to focus more on the gothic aspect of it and so before I get to that, um, for me at least, the genre of gothic, it's about that gloomy, eerie sort of a feeling and vibe to it that usually comes with some sort of supernatural or some like weird stuff that is happening. And also the most important thing is that the atmosphere, it could be the house, the town or whatever that is going on, it's also another character in the story. And so it's not a regular sort of a, like a mystery or a horror, but it's really like the house or again, the town or whatnot, it's a character as well so that to me is gothic and so based on those sort of description and what I believe it is the gothic um, genre I'm going to rate these books and see if you agree with me if you're not we will see by the end so let's get into them first we have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte to no one's surprise because let's be honest Jane Eyre it's literally first of all it's one of the greatest classics that it's out there but it's also one of the greatest gothic book it's the greatest gothic book that it's out there um Jane Eyre it's about Jane Eyre she was a child that had a very hard childhood and then eventually she grows up and she becomes this sort of a, like a governess and meets um, Mr. Rochester and sort of start to figure out what's happening in his house his past his like wife everything that is related to him and so that's basically the like the main story of Jane Eyre so this book it's 10 out of 10 when it comes to gothic because you have all the elements and everything. The house is a character on its own. You have those sort of supernatural, gloomy, eerie feelings that it's happening. You're not sure what's going on until you figure out the story. You have this sort of symbolism and complex characters that represent so many different things. And you're seeing this um, a very young woman that like, going through her journey and to figure out who she is, what she wants. And so... I completely agree with Jane Eyre being the top in this on this list and so it's 10 out of 10. So for the rest we're going to sort of compare them to Jane Eyre and like how they will kind of compare to that. Anyway then the next book we have um, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And so this book, it's also, oh my God, it's a very good, another classic. Um, this book, it's about Dr. Frankenstein. He was this scientist that really wanted to create life or sort of like create life that it's uh, his own creation really in true meaning of that sense and then that's how we um sort of like have the monster of frankenstein and everything that happens with that and so for this book while it has elements of gothic to me again it has those gloomy feeling to it we have a very sort of a nice background and atmosphere that it's sort of helping to the story we have complex characters we have the symbolism there but to me um Frankenstein it's really the mother or like the father or whatever of sci-fi and it's what really started that genre so if I truly want to give it a like a fair rating to me it's like uh, seven 
could be eight maybe because again like this reading it's not about how good or bad the book is it's about how gothic it is and so I feel like mm, somewhere between six to eight really it's like there were parts that has that elements of gothic but the end of the it's like it's like the story the main thing it's sci-fi in a sense so it's that range of six to eight again I do like this book being on this list but I'm not sure if it should be the like the second book on the list or not but what do I know? You should let me know what do you think if it should be the second book or not. So anyway, moving on, we have Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte, another book by um, one of the Bronte sisters. This book, it's about this young man that he's sort of renting this property and after a while sort of gets involved in the story and what is happening with the family that owns um, that property and some of them, like some of the other properties and especially Heathcliff, uh, who is this like older man that he is really like the owner of all of these property and um, he's um, like learning about Heathcliff past, um, the family that used to own these properties and everything that's related to those things and when it comes to gothic this is also I think it's another 10 truly it's the Bronte sister it's really doing it um, because once again we have that gloominess so we also have that sort of supernatural we have the like the house and sort of a little bit of like the, that like the whole property the town the like the, everything that's happening to add to the story as a character on its own and so I feel truly that it's a great book to be on this list I should sort of feel that maybe this one should actually be the second book but again um we can sort of debate on that but I feel it's a great book to be on this list it's a wonderful book you should read it it's one of those classics that like honestly never gets old um I love Jane Eyre a bit more just because of the story um but still gothic wise a wonderful book then we have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Um, this book, it's about this young woman who meets uh, Maxime. He is this very handsome, rich guy that um, he's a widower and um, they fell in love, they get married and then after like their honeymoon they move back to Maxime's like house and this is the house that he used to live with his um, um, wife and so his ex-wife and so now this woman is in this house and she is freaked out in a sense start to freak out because like she doesn't know the entire story about the past and what happened to the wife how she died and what was the story behind it and there's all of these like servants and like they say some stories max has his own stories and then like the house has a whole other different sort of feeling like rebecca is there rebecca is the name of the ex-wife and so just story it's about that and then this book it's wonderfully done it has all of those elements of gothic I would give it a nine though because to me again as I said like I sort of compare everything to Jane Eyre and Rebecca at least for me didn't hit it as much like it was really close like it's really there but it's like missing a little bit and so because of that I think nine is sort of a fair of a rating for it at least for me um, but again if you have not read it you should definitely read it because it's a pretty darn good book then we have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Heidi by Robert Louis Stevenson. So this book, it's about this young man who has a friend, Dr. Jekyll, and um, uh, this doctor, he's a scientist, that it's very interested in sort of finding a way to separate our good and our bad in our personality, to like sort of have this sort of a dual personality in a sense that like one is responsible for everything good that we do and another one is for all the like the wickedness that it's inside every other person and eventually um he's able to find this sort of potion maybe um in a sense to be able to like um separate those two elements and the story it's about like what is going to happen and like how is that going to work so this book it's 
very interesting again. Um, I don't want to compare it to Frankenstein because it's not not Frankenstein. You don't have that monster or anything of that nature, but at the same time, you have a sort of a monster, right? And so this is another book that to me feels like that it's between sci-fi and sort of gothic because you are um, you have this symbolism of like science that how science and morality can go hand in hand and how sometimes they should not cross that line so because that's there it takes out a little bit from the gothicness of it uh, but it's still it's a pretty good book because you have like this whole atmosphere and the environment that's happening that it is not truly a character but adds to the story on its own by adding those like gloomy feelings to it so it's still pretty close when it comes to like a very good gothic books so i will rate it maybe eight i think eight is pretty decent for this book um in a sense that like again like maybe two points for that sort of sci-fi aspect of it but eight for overall gothic feel or mm, gothicness to it then we have the phantom of the opera by gaston le rocks oh, i said that very weirdly <laughs> gaston le, le rocks gaston le rocks yes that's that's the one um, so this is another wonderful classic that actually I have read it before this list, but by the time that I start reading it, I never thought I like it as much as I end up liking it because to me, um, it was just like this story of was like, okay, it's an interesting story, but like, I, I was not sure where it will go and what will happen. And by the time that I finished it, I was like, this is such a good book. Um, I mean, obviously a lot of people loves it. Um, so the story, it's about this um, young journalist. He is sort of writing the stories um, about the Paris Opera House. And recently uh, there comes this um, very young, beautiful, talented opera singer. And she is just so wonderful and talented. And this journalist sort of falls in love with her and is pursuing her. And while all of this is happening, um, there are some weird stuff that it's going on with this opera house and um, people believe that the Phantom is the person that is responsible for it and they believe that he's this like sort of a disfigured character that lives in the opera house and they're not really sure if he's a ghost, if it's a real person, monster, what is happening, but they know that there is this thing that it's inside this opera house and it's doing all of these things. And then um, he gets involved with this singer and sort of like trying to mentor her, but then like the relationship changed a bit and everything. So it's a very fascinating story. I enjoyed it very much. Um, and it's another book that like you have this opera house that adds to this story, not as the character per se, but the just the feelings that it adds to the book that by the time that you're going through these like different scenes that like sometimes it's so emotional and sometimes there is this like mystery and then there's the horror of it and then like everything that's just going on so it's like very well done and also phantom he as a character it's one of those characters that at least for me it's like you love to hate and hate to love like you know like you have this sort of a feelings that like you do not agree with him all the time but sometimes you do agree with him so anyway it's a wonderful book and it's a book that i think i will give it a nine um it is pretty close to jane Eyre because i really enjoyed it but it's just like you know a little bit maybe like nine and a half like it's really there but it's like maybe yes i will give it a nine and a half because i do like phantom of Opera more than rebecca so maybe like rebecca it's like eight and a half nine and phantom of Opera is like nine nine and a half so that's like and again i i'm not rating them because i like them more but it's because like i feel i like them more because they were more gothic if that makes sense and so i think that should be the rating for these two books then we have the haunting of hill house by shirley jackson so this book i have never read it before this list it was one of those that i have never read it and by the time that i read it i was like hmm why is this uh, on this list so it's it's a it's a very interesting book the book it's about this 
haunted house and this group of people that they go to this house to sort of figure out what's happening what is going on with the like what's the story there and then we're following all of these different characters but we have the main character um i believe it was elizabeth if i'm not wrong and um elizabeth or eleanor one of these two <laughs> and um she is the like the main person that is telling us the story of like what is going on with this house and as the story progress she is sort of losing her sanity and so we are also losing our sense of what is going on in this house is it what it's actually happening or it's what she's sort of imagining because like you know i don't know if you do it i do it sometimes that like it's dark it's late at night and you're just like i don't know sitting somewhere laying down before bed and then you make up all of these like random scenario and scared the shit out of yourself um that's the feeling there like you know like she is because of everything that is going on and the like the the vibes of the house she's starting to feel all of these things and she's starting to be scared and so we're not really sure that if she's losing her sanity completely and the stuff that she's imagining it's really just imagination or if it's really there so anyway it was an interesting book but to me while maybe people suggest that because the house it's a character and that's one of the characteristic of gothic to me this book was mostly horror honestly it really was not gothic to me at all and so i feel that like this one will get uh, maybe three to five um simply because it had elements that could put it in a gothic list but not enough to put it in top 10. And so because of that, I sort of feel it was a book that, again, the book itself, it was really good, but it's, it's I don't think it should be in top 10 of a, like a gothic list. So that's what I, what I think or feel. Moving on, we have The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. So this is another sort of a classic um, that, it's it's interesting um this book it's about this young man he's an art teacher and one day he's just going about his life um and then there's this woman in a white sort of like dress and she shows up and he's not sure if that's a ghost if somebody's pranking him like what is happening and then um he started to teach these two young girls they're half sisters and because of that he sort of gets involved with their life and like one of them she's marrying this rich man that he's sort of like you're not sure about him and so we get involved into the story of like what's his past what's going on what's with the whole like the woman in white and everything that is related to that town and city and um and this is like happening in sort of a, like the victorian era and so it it was a very I, I enjoyed it it's one of those books that it doesn't have a like a house or something that it's the other character but it's the era the victorian era that really is the character that's adding that gloominess to the story and i feel it was one of those books that while it had um a bit elements of horror maybe some like a mystery to it it was very similar to like maybe like Jane Eyre that like you have that elements of sort of supernatural maybe you're like feeling or like a uh, withering high that like you have the sort of supernatural activities that is going on but it's not like horror sort of supernatural and so I feel um it could be I, I didn't go through the rest of the list fully to see if there were other books that I would want to put it higher ranking wise but like this book I will give it six to eight maybe maybe seven to eight because it had its moment but it also like like similar to Rebecca like it was missing some aspect that like it could have been better and it could have pushed it to the highest level so I think like six and a half to eight it's a, like a pretty decent and fair rating for it I think so so moving on we have we have always lived in the castle again by shirley jackson this is another book that i actually read it recently uh, before this list but recently still um and it's a book that 
I enjoyed it quite more than what I would have expected it. Um, uh, the story is about these two sisters and they're living in this sort of a like a castle house sort of situation with their uncle. And the people of the town that is like very close by to their house are sort of like shunning them. They have been shunning them for a while now because a bunch of their relatives of these two sisters um, died because of poison. And so the people of town are not sure what happened, who did it. They're sort of assuming one of the two sisters did it. And so they're really like trying to avoid this entire family. And as a result, the sisters also are sort of avoiding the town people as well. And uncle is like pretty old. So he's also like not leaving the house. And so the story is really about that. And you're trying to figure out what happened. What is the reality? Like, what is the like real story? But like what went gone and what went on and what was the like the um, the real reason that like the family members were poisoned. And so this book, um, pretty good gothic wise. Um, we have the house as a very main element of the story. We have good characters. Uh, we have that sense of gloominess to it. I think this one, um, it was, I will say, uh, much better in uh, compared to the, what was the name? The Hunting of Hill House, um, compared like in a, like a sense of Gothic, because it really didn't have that element of like horror to it. It really was more Gothic. And so I feel I will give it like a good solid eight um, as, doing it pretty good not Jane Eyre but still pretty good and so it was a nice book I enjoyed it I I, I I will recommend it if you are looking for like sort of a like a middle ground when it comes to gothic <laughs> you know if, if that's a thing I don't know and then last but not least we have the 13th tale by Diana St uh, Setterfield so this book, it was also another one that I have never read it. And this is actually the most recent Gothic book, which I was very excited about because like, as you saw, most of these, like the top 10, nine of them are sort of classic. I mean, sure, there's like a few of them, like uh, we always lived um, in this castle, in the castle or like um, the hunting of Hill House. Those are like recent-ish, like, like they're in like 60s, I believe, um, but you know, they're not recent recent, but they're not like Jane Eyre classic, but it's still like most of them were not really considered as recent other than this book. And so I was very excited about that and I enjoyed it. So this um, story, um, it's about a young woman um, and she is asked to write this story and biography of a very well-known but mysterious sort of a author. And so I believe her name was Margaret. Yes, yes. So Margaret is going to write the story about Viola, I think. Yeah, Vida. Um, and so Margaret goes and meet with Vida and start to learn about her history, her family, her drama, and everything that was going on. And there are all of these, like, the 13 sort of tale that together shape the, like, the bigger story and the, like, the main mystery of it. So I really enjoyed this story because it was truly paying tribute and homage to all the classics like the Bronte sister and Dickens. And so I enjoyed that, that it was trying to be a sort of a new way of Gothic in a sense, a little bit to again, like to happen in a, like a modern era, but at the same time, still truly respect um, to the like the Gothic gods. And I, I enjoyed that. It was very interesting to see it. And I feel it did it very well. It was an interesting book to sort of go through all of those like family drama, the mystery of it. But um, because of that, I think it was maybe like a good eight, eight and a half. It had, again, elements, but you can always push to be better because like, you know, like with everything, you have like something that is the greatest, which is Jane Eyre in this case. And then like you're reaching and reaching and reaching, but there's always room for improvement. So that's my take. <laughs> and I am very interested to, now that we went through the top 10, to hear your thought, to see if you agree with me, if you disagree, if there are some books that you would suggest to be on the top 10 Gothic list. 
and I hope that like you share those with all of us to sort of see like if we all agree that like I was right I was wrong if I was harsh on some books if I was sort of like giving too much of a like overrated um, rating to some of these books and so I hope that you enjoyed this video and until the next time happy reading